So I have a question, a leading question for you ladies to start off. So we're almost finished with um, what our curriculum says for um, Kabbalah Shabbat. And um, I was thinking about the symbolism of Shabbat as the bride. And you know that song, Chosin Kala Mazel Tov. So Chosin, that's, that's Ashkenaz Hebrew. So it's Chatan. Chatan means a groom mm -hmm. and Kala. And that's the bride. So the symbolism, and I wrote about, I'm going to send you my, uh, my article for Shavuot that I wrote for Women's Day. So the symbolism is that the bride is Israel, the Jewish people, not just the, the bride of, is Shabbat, but the Jewish people, Israel. The uh, groom is God, Hashem. The matchmaker is Moshe, Moses. And the wedding uh, document, the ketubah, is the Torah. So it's, it's a very beautiful symbolism. Now, uh, there's a lot of reference to Shabbat being the bride. And in the first piece we're going to do, L'chadodi, it means come, my beloved. Do, dod in regular Hebrew means uncle. Doda is aunt. But Dodi means my beloved. And um, there's um, a song that when I got married, actually the organ player was in a synagogue, but the, the organist was not Jewish. But I wanted this song uh, about uh, Le Chado D, and it's a dance music too. And that's what I walked down the aisle to, this my beloved. It's just was very beautiful. So the question that I have, that's my little lead up is, has anyone ever been to a Hasidic or Orthodox wedding? Okay, some of you. So how do they treat the bride? I mean, do they do anything special with the bride? Because my daughter is married to a Chabadnik, to a Babich. And I found there were a lot of customs that I was not accustomed to that I had to um, buck up and say, okay, fine. So um, you said, um, Helene, that you had been yeah. to- Yeah, I was at so Hasidic weddings, uh, ultra Orthodox weddings. And my daughter's my daughter was conservative and they did some of the same things, but they had the, um, the bedekin where the bride sits there and the groom you want to has explain to... what bedekin is right yeah the, so before the, the ceremony this yes before the service is actually pretty cool so before the ceremony we had two bands klezmer bands and one led the women the bride her mother and the groom's mother in into a room a special room and we sat on chairs in a stage on a stage and the bride was in the middle and bride is veiled. And then for my son and his son-in-law and all, all the other male members, they had another group that brought them in and he had to identify the bride. He had to right. take off the veil. And that, that comes from the Torah? That comes from, right. and the, that's right. It was identifying the bride so that there's not a trick. There's not it's a trick like the, the uh, sure it's substitute not Leia. Leia for Rachel, right? right? So Jacob gets the wrong girl. He gets the older sister. He gets Leia, uh, who's not as pretty as Rachel. And then at night, surprise. <laughs> and it was girl. great. It was wonderful. So now they lift a veil to check her out. That's what they made, and I And at the, at the uh, uh, Orthodox weddings I've been to, it was the same thing where you had you know, they had the Bedeckin and- Check her out. Yeah. Now, Check the out. Hebrew word, if you go for an examination, is livdok. And uh, livdok means to examine. That's what they do. They check her out and make, make sure I've got the right girl here. So the guys come dancing in. If they're Hasidim, oh, Yehuda. Call Sason ve call Simcha, call Chatan ve call Kala. And they come singing and dancing. They dance the bridegroom in. Meanwhile, 
the bride is on the chair and the chair, like with my daughter, we put flowers on it. You know, I bought fake flowers and she's there and people are like revering her. And yes, little girls come, come up, okay, little right. girls come up and they kiss her, you know, that's like special blessing. Okay, so- um, did, did you sit next uh, to her though? Cause the ones, the ultra Orthodox I've been to and actually one of my children's that was modern Orthodox, we sat next to the, the mothers and the grandmothers sat with the bride. Yes, yes, yeah, the, the, the immediate bride, family. Yeah. Sits. And the they people the, uh, get- We had the mothers too, which I like. I got some- The mothers and the grandmothers yeah. sit with the bride. <laughs> And, and people come up to, and she's like on a little dais, like a little platform usually. So she's higher up. So already she's honored because she's higher. Like when you go up for a Torah Anna. I mean, there's all this very, this symbolism. And the little girls come up and they get a blessing from the bride. The bride is able to give blessings out. So you come and you compliment her, how beautiful she is and what a wonderful day this is. And, and um, you... Then later you're going to dance with her and sing to her and do all kinds of shtick for her. You know they have uh, they have all kinds of things like they make believe they would like a, a bow and all kinds of things. They tie handkerchiefs together and make a jump rope. Meanwhile, the men are putting hats on fire and they're dancing around and they're doing all kinds of. Yeah, I went along with stuff. the hats on fire. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. Looks like the place is going to blow up. Yeah, so uh, it's a very festive, it's very freilich. Um, so we treat the bride extra special. And actually this whole Kabbalat Shabbat is really, it's the warm up for Shabbat, for the Torah, remember that's the Ketubah. And at the end, the, so there's six Psalms and then comes L'cha Dodi. And L'cha Dodi at the end is we stand in reverence to the bride, in honor. You stand before a king or a queen, right? We stand when the Torah comes around. We stand for the Kala uh, and we welcome her. And that's in the prayer, the last verse. So there's nine verses in Lacha Dodi and there's a refrain that keeps repeating in between the verses, if you're not familiar with it. So and likewise, uh, if I remember correctly, when a uh, an Orthodox bride is getting married, I think everybody stands. Every when she uh, comes uh, down, it's not just mm -hmm. Orthodox. Every church service, also in a church, you always stand for the bride. So the bride mm -hmm. comes in, and this and there's honor. Queen. So that, that's the a universal thing. She's right. a queen, queen. I like that. right? The queen. You would meet. If you would meet uh, Queen Elizabeth, you know, you'd have to bow it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is, uh, it's leading up to it. And, and I read the translations of all the Psalms. And basically, it's talking about the Jewish people rising up again, because they must have been written in the period of exile. And it's coming back to Jerusalem and defeating the enemies and, and being a nation again and uh, honoring and respecting God and picking up our, our religion again. So this, these Psalms go back a long time, you know, when you're in Galut, in exile. And it's like the wish, a messianic wish. And there's even um, references to the Messiah. So that's what we are dealing with. Now, I wanted to tell you something about the structure of Lachadodi. Does anyone know what an acrostic is? An acrostic. Okay, so that is what's here. Um, this psalm, Lachadodi, come on my beloved, was written by Rabbi Solomon Halevi Alkabetz. And an acrostic is that each line, or each significant line in this case, the beginning of each verse begins with a letter of his name. Oh. So you have a shin, a lamed, a men, mem, and a hey for Shlomo in the first four verses. And then you have Halevi. He doesn't do alphabets. So it spells out um, Shlomo Halevi, Solomon <laughs> the Levite. And there's another prayer that we all are very familiar with, and that's Ashrei. Ashrei Yoshrei Vetecha. Oji Halelucha. That's that one. 
It doesn't alphabet. spell out somebody's name. That one does it by the alphabet. And if you take a look at it, when you have a chance, each line begins with the letter of the alphabet. So if someone's not paying attention and they're yakking and you lose your place, just listen to the line and, and, and you listen to what's the letter. Gadol Adonai, well, no. So, oh, I'm on Gimel. I'm on, I have to find the line that begins with Gimel. So it's easy to find your place as if you're listening. Um, and that doesn't go that fast, that one. Okay, so um, let's see what else I wanted to say about it. Okay, so this comes at the end, um, mostly at the end of the other six Psalms. We've been studying them. And I did, I apologize again. It's just so crazy. They want me to do so much in the synagogue. I have a Torah reading on Shabbat. Then I have a Torah, Torah reading on Tuesday for the holiday. I you have, have a to Torah be a reading now? That's an honor. That's really neat for Shavuot. It, yeah, you know, I'm, well, I'm reading on Tuesday morning, and um, as I was explaining this to, to some of our friends uh, who came on a little early, I'm, I'm going to try to lead a little dancing, a little um, Israeli dancing under the chuppah, like a little uh, mini flash mob, and have the kids. <laughs> I told him he's going to sing some uh, wedding songs. I'm going to introduce the idea of the bride and the groom. And the guy and the Torah, and then he's going to start singing oh, like, oh, Jesh, and then I'm going to have a couple of us, like five or six of us, stand up and just walk up onto the beam and then just start dancing. How nice. Carol, are you open? Are you open? Am I what? The synagogue is open? Yeah, up to 40 people. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. And then, of course, you all heard that um, if you are outside, you don't have to wear a mask. Last night I was gonna work on um, sending stuff, but we went to, um, I was I was booked up for a, um, a this is from Tor Torat L or something like that. And they have a different author talks. And this one was the light that guides or the light, some kind of a, it's a, a new um, book. And I went to the library and I ordered it and the author was gonna talk about it something about the Holocaust, it sounded really interesting. So that was at 7.30, but then I got a notice that there had been a few deaths in the um, extended family. So there was a shiver menu. Oh. So I said to my husband, you know what? I wanted to go to the book talk on Zoom, but it's more important to go to the shiver menu. Yeah. So off we went. <laughs> and the only time we got back then I had to make dinner and I was pooped. <laughs> so anyway. I did send out some vocabulary today. Um, I'm just like a little overwhelmed on things. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go over um, the page that I sent out to you is actually from our textbook from last semester. And it has four verses out of the nine. It has verse one, two, oh. the first two and the last two, and then eight and nine. Um, and nine is the one where you stand. So you're facing, when you're doing your prayers, you're facing east, right? You're facing Jerusalem because you're facing the ark. And in every synagogue, the ark is facing east. It's the eastern wall of the synagogue. Right. So where you stand and you turn around to the west, because the bride is coming from the west to the east. In the shtetl days, they used to go out to the edge of the field and get get washed, go to the bath and in like a kittle or whatever, and actually welcome the bride, so to speak, you know, and uh, then come back to services. So, um, all right, so anyway, we have these um, four verses. So the question that I, I looked up today is, which way do you bow first? <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, because you see people all which ways, you know, so you turn around, your turn and am I going this way this way am I going right to left or left to right and middle so there's three little bounds so I looked it up and of course guess what I found some rabbis said this way some rabbis said this way there's <laughs> different traditions consult your local rabbi but one I found and I took some notes on this because the one that made most sense to me, I like that, is this. So then I just said, well, which way do I usually do it? And I think I usually go left to right. 
And that's what this rabbi, this big rabbi said, the bowing. And it's, so you're face to face with the Shekhinah. That's like the feminine emanation of God. The emin, it's, it's a feminine word, the, shikh, the divine presence. Um, and that it says, I have set Hashem always before me. Psalm 16, verse eight. So if God is always in front of you, okay, that's one idea. Now, there's another quote from Deuteronomy, from Devarim in chapter 33. And it says, from his right hand comes the law. Okay, so I'm facing you. Okay, so you're looking at me. If from my right hand comes the law, and that's important, which way are you going to bow? You're facing me. Left. 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 You're going to left. Right? From his right hand comes the law. So to honor that fact that, that from God's right hand comes the Torah, you're going to honor that first. So you're going to bow left to see God's right hand and then right and then center. Hmm. Now, the note also said that we used to prostrate ourselves. We used to go down like the Arabs do. But once it becomes popular with another religion, we hold back and we say, <laughs> okay, no more full prostration like they do in Yom Kippur. We're going to just bend the knees and go over by our waist. We're not going down all the way except on Yom Kippur and only the Chazanda said. So I thought that was very interesting. So it's left, right, and center because we're going to... Can, can I, clar can I yeah. clarify something? I, I was out with a friend of mine the other night who's Catholic and she asked me why the Jews don't bow. And we had just gone over that. Yeah. Wasn't it that we used to bow but we yes. like to be different. Yes. And when all the religions started bowing, we stopped. Correct. Okay. Yeah. It's custom. You, you told it, you taught us just in time for me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't say that any place that I know in the Torah, you know, left, right, that's minhag, that's custom. Uh, however, uh, that custom stuck, and that's what we still do. So yeah, that's a, it's a good point to bring it up again, Elaine. So very good. Carol, right, when so exactly do you stand? What, at what point exactly do you stand? Okay. The they go, um, let's see. All right, it goes Bowie Hala. When um, you, you're reading Bowie Hala, Terapala, Gambusim, Chau, Uvitsahala, Tohema. Yeah, when you get to Bowie, the last line, yeah, Bowie. Right. Then Bowie you turn around. Understand. The last line. And Bowie hala, Bowie hala, yes. And then you bow. So you turn around and then on Bowie, which is the last of these four lines, left, right, and forward. And just a little bow from the waist. You're nothing tragic. Nothing. <laughs> no going down. So um, you'll see the whole congregation get up, but some people will go left and then right, and some people will go right and left. It's amazing they don't crash into each other. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to go over some of the words first, and then we'll read it. All right, I did send out vocabulary. I sent out three things. First, I sent out the two pages. Then I thought I had sent it out, and then I went, oops, and I sent actually sent it out. And then I did the... Um, Vocabulary I was having trouble with my computer, but I got it. So, Lecha Dodi, come my beloved. Dodi is beloved. And um, it says, Lecha Dodi, come my beloved. Likrat Kala. Um, that's that's to, to greet, Kore, to call to the, the bride, Likrat Kala, to welcome the bride, Kala. Pene, your punam is your face. Pene, Shabbat, the face of Sabbath. Nekabala, which is the bride. Kabel, I think I gave you that root once before. It means to receive or to greet. The nun at the beginning of the verb shows that it's a future tense. Nekabla, we will welcome, we will receive. So come, my beloved. Um, calling on the bride, 
and in front of her face, we will, uh, we will welcome, we will welcome her face. Now I looked at three different books. Um, I have two different tutoring and I also have this complete, this one has translations of all the prayers. This one is the most honest. Which the one others, is which one? Can you hold this it up? Is not a, this is a, a linear prayer book. This is line by line. Oh. I was given this as a gift from the synagogue. This oh. is a line by line, true translation, not poetic. Oh. Because the others, one, one Siddur that I have tried to rhyme things. And another one gives a very flowery translation. But I'm a, I'm a language person and I like to know exactly yeah. what the words mean. Yeah. Yeah. This one is the best. This is what it says. Let me just read to you the first stanza. Okay, it says, Come, my beloved friend, to greet the bride. Let us welcome the Sabbath. That's Lecha Dodi Lekrat Kala Penei Shabbat Nekabula. And then it says, Shamor. Okay, we didn't get there yet. But then it says, Preserve and remember in a single utterance the one Almighty caused us to hear. Adonai is one and his name is one for fame, for glory, and for praise. They didn't try to rhyme oh, it. That's great. Yeah, and these are actually the words. This is this is not um, hocus pocus, you know, write what you want, just make it sound good. Nobody <laughs> will know. It's a real thing. And now there's a lot of words there you're gonna know. So yeah. in the first stanza, and I don't know if you had a chance to, to look at it, but then uh, so we had the kala, which is important. Now, then it says, um, uh, so we had shamor. Did you ever hear that? Shamor, shamor at Yom HaShabbat. Uh -oh. Shamor. Shamor is to guard. Oh. To observe. Observe, yeah. Shamor. Vizachor, Zachor, like Zachron, remember. 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 Okay, so in one place in Exodus it says Shamor, uh, guard the Sabbath, and then in I think it's in Deuteronomy it says Zachor, remember. Isn't no, that reverse? Reverse. I think it's Zachor at Yom Hashabbat. That's uh, that's in Exodus. So it says to guard or preserve and remember Zachor. Mm -hmm. So, um, guard and remember the Dibor in one word. This one says, preserve and remember, Shamor's preserve and remember in a single utterance. Oh. And then it says, Hishmianu el hamyuchad. Hishmianu is uh, make us hear, let, let it be heard to us. God, El, will will make it um, heard to us. Hamyuchad. Echad is in that word. Hamyuchad is the only one. The only one, God, will let those words, shamor v'zachor, be heard to us. What's Hishmianu again? It's, uh, it's like passive. Will cause to be heard to us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And in the middle of that, you should start getting to take away the fat and look for the root, the shoresh. Shema, shin, mem, ayin, shema. Mm -hmm. Do you know it's something about hearing? Shema Yisrael, hero Israel. So he shmianu, the new on the end is to us, and it means to make heard to us. Oh, wow. El is God. God will make these words heard to us. Remember, um, Zachor et Yom HaShabbat, remember the Sabbath day, Lakod Show, to keep it holy. So God will remind us of these words to preserve, shamor, keep, and remember. So there's two different things there. Zachor, remembering something, but the more active, the ter activi, is to actually do it. And what does preserve mean? It means observe. That's what Shamor means. It means to observe Sabbath, go to services, have a nice dinner in, in whatever capacity you do, like candles, bless the children, whatever, whatever you do. Shamor of Zachor, very important. 
Okay, um, Adonai Echad, and there's again that idea of oneness, God is one, Ushemo, and the O is N, the O in the end is his, and there's the word shame, name. name, and his name, Echad, his name is one, that's in the Shema, Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad, there's one God, no trinity for us, Adonai Echad, Ushmo echad, the basic stuff. With shame, all tiferet. And um, uh, tiferet means splendor. Oh. His name is splendiferous. Mm. His name is uh, splendid, magnificent, and um, lithila. Chila is a praise and praiseworthy. Is it is okay. it praise with a hey or a chet? Lit the tehila uh, and for tehila, tehila, okay. and uh, for praise. So his name is, is splendid and and uh, praiseworthy. So we have a nice introduction to Lachadodi. Oh. It's talking about God right here. It doesn't say about the about the God, about the bride. Okay, so let's try to read. If you have, you I said you could use your own sidur if you want to get used to using your own sidur. Yeah. For Kabbalah Shabbat. That's a good idea. And the first verse. So um, the beginning is the same for all of the nine verses. And it goes, the melody is slow. One goes like this. Now let's all read that. Let's read that first line, okay? All together. Lecha Dodi Lekrat Kala Pene Shabbat Nikabalah. So, Nikabalah, we will welcome the bride to her face. Okay, Nikabalah. Okay, so uh, would somebody like to read those four lines? We're jumping off the high board here. Anybody <laughs> like to read those four lines? The first verse. Okay. Any takers? Okay. Is that Alice? Robin. Oh, Robin. Robin's hand is up. Okay, Robin. Lacha dodi likrat kala, Kanesha bat nikabla, Shamor vizahor, the dibor echad. Hishmianu el ham yuchad, Adonai echad, Ushimo echad. Wow. One more line. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, L'shem ul tiferet velit hila. And there, the word L'shem, it means for glory. For glory. Yeah and splendor and praise I thought very nice right it's it does but it also means glory oh okay well the shame oh. yeah shame does mean but um i looked it up just to make sure but shame also means glory and like uh well you can see the relationship name and for renown is for someone's name to be famous and so it does mean it means glory or renown and splendor and praise, nice synonyms there. Okay, would somebody else like to try? I saw some other hands. Yes. Back there again. Same one. The same, same one. Thing. Somebody same else want to try? Same thing or the next thing? Same thing. I'll, I'll try. try. Who said I'll try? I did. That Ella, made... who's I? Ella. Who? Ella. 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 Okay. Shamor vis vis shamor vis core badi 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 or badi bor her 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 It's an olive. Echad. Great. Okay. Um Hishmi Hishmi Yanu 
El Hab Ham Yukad Ham Yukad Adonoi Echad Ush Ushmo Echad Le Shame Ul Tif Tif El Rat El Tif Tif Eret El Tif Eret The Lead He La The Heat He La Yes, Bolit Hila. Very nice. One more, one more. Come on, somebody else. You were doing so beautifully with the reading. Ah, Elaine. Go, go on. Okay. Uh, Shamor Vizahor Bedikor Ehad Hish Mianu El Ham Yuhad. Adonai Ehad Ushmo Ehad Lashem Ultif Eret Velit Hila. Very good. A plus. Three A pluses. Really, I got really to nice. practice with two of them first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now let's go on to. So that just praises God, right? And it tells us to. Uh, Shamor v'zachor, it tells us actually uh, about God is saying to honor the Sabbath day because we started with come and let's welcome the kala, let's greet the kala, penei, Shabbat, the, the face of Shabbat in front of her, nekabela. We will greet the Sabbath bride to her face. Panim el panim, face to face. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna meet that bride. So that's really nice. Okay, now in the second stanza. So again, in between each one, we have to go lechado de lechrat kala pene shabbat nekabla. So the melody is something like this: Tam mor v'zab v'zachor b'dibor echad hishmiyanu elham yuchad. Adonai echad ushmo echad l'shemul tiferet balit hila lechad dodi lechad kala panei shabbat nekabel. It's kind of like a very sing song. <laughs> okay, now some have a little more stepped up, like lechad dodi lechad kala panei shabbat nekabel. And um, there's lots of ways to sing this. So you probably have heard many different versions depending on the shul you go to. Because this is a song that has lots of melody. It's very popular. It's, it's one of the big um, Kabbalat Shabbat songs. Okay, let's go on to see what verse two is all about. I gave you some vocabulary. So in the second verse, Likrat Shabbat Lechu Vanilcha. Likrat means towards Shabbat, Lechu, go towards Shabbat, we're greeting her, Vinelcha, uh, and we will, um, Lech is go, is it come to Shabbat, go, uh, go and, uh, and, and we'll go together, Nelcha, we will go, so it's now we're, we're going towards Shabbat, we're going to greet her, Ki, because, he, that means she, ki, he, mikor, she is the source. She is the source, habracha, for blessing. She is the source of blessing because the Sabbath bride is, a, is a big concept here. All right, so Mayrosh, and this is interesting. Rosh is your head. If you've ever played Shimon Omer, Shimon Omer, Yadayim Maharosh, Yadayim Mal. Oh, Simon Yadayim <laughs> Yadayim Lamata. We used to play in in the Hebrew school. We used to play uh, Shimon Omer. Simon says. So Likrat Shabbat. So we're running towards the Shabbat. We're greeting her. 
כי היא מקור הברכה, שהיא is the source, the core of blessing. Now this is מי ראש, here doesn't mean from the head, it means um, from the beginning, מי ראש, from the beginning, מקדם, from a long time ago, from before, נסוכה, she's been appointed from, from the beginning to, um, from beforehand, מקדם, from a long time ago, she has been appointed, the source of all blessing, the Sabbath, okay? And then um, Sof is at the end, uh, when you're learning Torah trope, and when you go Sof Pasuk, Sof is the end and Pasuk is the verse. So the end, Sof Maase, the end of the, the end of creation, um, the thought, um, Tehila. Uh, it begins from the from the end of create this is this is from the beginning of creation this this goes way back this idea let me read smoothly the the um the what is tahila again okay tahila what is that again tahila is praise praise tahila praise yeah i we did have that before Okay, yes. so now, now come my beloved friend to greet the, the bride. Let us welcome the Sabbath. To greet the bride, come let us go. For it is a source of blessing. From the very beginning of old. That's from the beginning. From old, from before, not from the wine. It was appointed. Last in creation. Ah, that's what it is. So the end of creation. Uh, this I love this line. So maase, maase is creation. The end of creation. Um shava in God's thought, tehila, the beginning. So it's like the most important thing, the end of creation, the Sabbath, right? Shabbat. They created everything in six days and on the seventh day rested. Shabbat, Shabbat, he rested. So it was the last thing created, but the most important thing. Now, when you're speaking modern Hebrew and you want to give your opinion, say, Ani I think, Ani she, I think that. So, Lachshov means to think. Ani a man says, Ani I think. It's important to be able to express yourself. So the word, so B means in, Machashava is the thought. And you see the root Choshev. Chet, Shin, Vet. Okay, Choshev. So thought is the noun, and Choshev, Lachshov, the verb. There's a three letter root. So the last to be created, the Sabbath, Shabbat, right? Because Yom Rishon, that's Sunday. But the first in thought, it's a really nice concept. I never thought of that before. This is the translation. It's very nice. Okay, so it goes like this. Um, <clears throat> So ma say the machshava tehila, and that's a mouthful. So ma say the machshava tehila. You think right. we'll ever get so this to... enough? Yeah, you practice. You know, I get how, the first how do you two words, words and then I'm lost. <laughs> how do you uh, do a Torah reading? You know, when you uh, get to know it. Well, you can do it a little faster. Then, yeah, I have a reading you tomorrow. Met, you and kind of memorize, yeah. Again and again and again. I can't tell you how many hours. Again and again, you know, for 13 lines. Keep going over. So I, uh, Machshev is a computer. Somebody that thinks for you. Have the root. <laughs> you have new words to make up. You have to use old roots. And that's how they create words. <laughs> So I need a, a volunteer for verse two. <clears throat> Who's gonna do it? Someone who didn't do it. I'll do it. 
Okay, Alice, very good. Okay. Likrat Shabbat Lehu Venailcha Ki Ki Makor Habaraha Marosh, no, Marosh, yeah, Marosh, Mikedem Vesucha. Nesucha. Nesucha. Sof Maase Bama Bama Ha Shabbat. A Shabbat, not Shabbat. Bama Ha Shabbat. Hatila. No, Tahila, excuse me, Tahila. Good. Okay. So, ma'ase b'macha shava, b'macha shava. Always break it up into syllables if it's a big word or an unknown word. Tehila. Okay. Again, we have there a tav, and the tav has the tail. You see a little hook on the end? That's the little tail. And the chet is straight. Tehila. Very nice. Tov mode. Another volunteer. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Marilyn or me? The second one. Esther? Go ahead, oh. Esther. Good. Leek rat Shabbat leku vene vinal ka ki hi me kor ha be rakha me rosh. Me ka dem ne tu ka sof mal a se be ma ka shava te hila. Oh, she's got those chets going on. <laughs> Good slam there. Very nice. Good slam. Bravo. <laughs> yes. Are you Flemish? <laughs> That's what Flemish is that Dutch? <laughs> Okay, I need one more volunteer for the second one who hasn't had a chance at it yet. Come on, let's. Everybody should have a chance. Yeah. All right, Sue. Oh, yes. Yes. Mademoiselle Carol. Grossman. Yes. How about I'm you? Here. Come on. Sure. Okay. okay. Start with Likrat Shabbat. Likrat Shabbat Lehu. I got to take off my glasses. <laughs> the Nelcha. Ki hi mekor habracha meirosh mikedem nesucha sof maase b'macha shava tehila. Very good. Let's just go back now, very quickly. I want to cover two more things, but um, we'll get to the end now. Um, I want you to go back to verse one uh, with Shamor v'zachor. Take a look at those words now. Let's just revisit them quickly and tell me some words that you really recognize. You should be building up a little bit of sight vocabulary, right? Some words that when you see, you go, oh, I get it. Echad. Echad. Okay. Echad. Okay. Echad. Good. In, um, when Isaac uh, is going up to be sacrificed and they talk about um, Yechidi, and he calls, he's got another son, he's got um, Esau, not Esau, my mind, who's uh, Abraham, um, has uh, Isaac and, uh, mm. oh, come on, help me out, who's, a, who's his other son, is it, is it Esau? No, who's no, a, no, the, no, the no. Uh, concubine, oh my brain, and then he, he, our son. Ishmael? Ishmael. 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 So he's got Ishmael, but he loves the son of Sarah more. This favoritism. We have a lot of dysfunctional Torah families. And he's going to sacrifice. And when he's, he's going to sacrifice, there's a word, Yechidi, my only one. How about that? If Ishmael was in the hearing distance, you need to have a shrink. The end of, but the root is <laughs> echad, 
one, my one and only. Abraham actually is in the Torah. He says, Yechidi, my only one. How about that? <clears throat> That's very powerful. And even more powerful when he's got to sacrifice him. He's giving up like a piece of his heart. Ishmael, okay, Ishmael, but but Isaac, that's something, another story. Okay, uh, any other words we recognize? So we have Echad and Yechidi. Good, anything else in the first verse Ushimo, that we recognize? Ushimo, um, the root of name. We see that a lot. Yeah, Ushimo, 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 Ushimo Echad. We're not saying that God is a show. Right <laughs> We're saying his name, Ushimo, and his name. So you have the prefix u or v, which means an. You have the word shame, and the the vav at the end o it means his. It's a possessive. Ushemo, Ushemo, and his name Ushemo, Ushemo, Echad. His name is one. Okay. And then you have the first verse. Shame also in there. Right. What does what does L what does low mean? Low. God. God, what does God. low? God has many names. In front of, what does low in front of mean? Low, low shame. The shame. Where low shame there? on the last line of the first verse. The shame. Shame. Low shame. The shame. Okay, I said in that case it means for glory, like renown. That your name is your name is famous. Fame, shame. Okay, uh, and then yud hey vav hey. Of course, you recognize the tetragrammaton. We talked about God's name, which we are never going to write on paper or on a blackboard. That is truly God's holy name, not the two yuds, as I found out. Okay, um, good. Uh, but dibor in a word lidaber. If someone says to you, "At midaber dibrit," no, I'm not speaking Chinese. <laughs> I'm a native son. <laughs> okay, so Lidaber is to speak. Dibor, in a word. Okay, look at the second stanza. Any words you recognize? Shabbat. 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 Okay. Shabbat. Key. What does so, key mean? Because key is because. because. What's likrat? Likrat is towards. Likrat, oh. we're going out towards oh. to meet. Likrat, <clears throat> Shabbat, and lichu like lichu neranana come from leich. Oh, lichu. It's plural. Plural command. Lichu go. Likrat. Shabbat lechu go. Yeah, he is because. What does he mean? She. she. You're right. Does anyone remember how to say he? Who? Oh. Oh. <laughs> is that she, famous she, thing? She, she. He is she, and who is he? And dog is and fish. me is who? <laughs> yeah, for dog is right. yeah, dog is fish. <laughs> and the dog is fish. And the dog is fish. I always would ask my Hebrew students, "When is a dog? Wait, when? When? Wait, when is when is a um, when is a dog not? When is a door? No, I forget. When is a dog not a dog? When is a when it's a fish. dog is a fish? Oh, when is a dog? When is a dog not a dog? When it's a fish, God. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask them, when is a dog not a dog? <laughs> we used to have some crazy times there. Huh? It's a wonder I never got fired. <laughs> okay. And Melcha. Um, what's Rosh? What's your Rosh? Show me your Rosh. Your Daya Melcha Rosh. Your head, Rosh. What's Melcha? We'll go. From Lech, you see the root there, Lamed Cha? Lech means to go. Nel Cha, come let us go. Lechu Nel Cha, go and we'll and go, we'll go. It's kind of like Yoda speak. Go, we'll go. 
Who <laughs> Vinilha? Okay, it's like a double double speak. Okay, now Kedem, I do not espouse that you drink Kedem. It's awful. The Kedem is okay. wine. The grape juice is okay. What grape you? Juice. The grape juice is okay. Oh, grape juice, but not the wine. No, no. Kedem <laughs> wine. No, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Kesser and well? Kedem. Low. <laughs> yeah, I don't care for those. Okay. All right. So soap. Soap is the end. The has soap. Soap pasuk. So, so what is Kedem? Okay. Kedem. Kedem is like uh, me Kedem. Kedem is um, from before. In the army, in the Israeli army, and I, I hate what I'm seeing on television right now. It's very disturbing. But uh, in the army, the Israeli army has a policy that the commanders don't sit someplace in an office, that they're in the battle and they are leading the men. They're in front of their men. They are more vulnerable. The higher up you are, the more vulnerable. So when they shout in battle, Kadima, Boychiks, Kadima, means forward. And the one who says that is the leader. Kadima, That's forward, Kodem. That's I never what? knew that. Now you know it. Kodem is leader? No, that's very... It's very, very poignant because they're the ones that are on, the, they're most vulnerable, the ones in the front. So the idea was you lead by example. You lead, you actually lead your men. Is that, the, is that the same as when my kids were younger? The youth group was Kadima. Yes, that the that's the name of the youth group. Thing? Yeah, Kadima is like forward. You know, we're advancing. There's uh, like Kadima. The, 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 there's, almost like the future. We used to call them the Kadinkies, the Kadinkies. <laughs> Those Kadima and then the older ones are USY. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you're beginning to recognize roots and some words, and that's really what I wanted to do. Okay. Third, let's go with the third stanza. Okay. So the third stanza, we have, um, okay. Um, where is the third? Oh, no, it's the eighth. I'm sorry. It's eighth. Right before the end. Oh, we're okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. There's a dance that goes yamina, yamina, smola, smola, lifamina, chora. To the right, to the left, forward and backwards, to the right and to the right, and to the left, forward and backwards. Da, 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 da. It's a Yemenite dance. Okay, even the word yamin, yamini, Yemenite. Okay, so where are we now? Yamin. Oops. Yeah, okay. Yamin usmo to the right and the left. Yamin usmo. Tifrotzi. You will spread out the et Adonai ta'aritzi and God you will praise. Aliyad next to or Aliyad or through the hand of Ish a man Ben Partsi who comes from the line of parrots. Benismicha from Sameach, Vena Gila. And that's from Gil. We had that last time, I think. Joyful. We will uh, rejoice and be happy. Here is the translation. Right and left, you will spread out. The Jewish people will spread out because they were probably in um, diaspora at this point. And Adonai, you will praise. Through the man descended from Peretz, we're talking about David, the messianic idea of David. We will rejoice, the nismecha, and exult, v'nagila, gil. Gila, the name gila, it means joy, mm. right? Mm. So, nagila, mm. hava, nagila, mm. come, let us be joyful, right? Hava, come, nagila, there's the nun, we will rejoice, hava, nagila. Okay, so let's get through this one. Um, anybody want to read those four lines who hasn't had a crack at it yet? Faye, would you like to read? Okay, I'll do that. Um, From Yamin. Okay. Yamin Ushmol Tefiro. It's a it's a it's a sin. Ush. Oh, Ushmol. Ushmol Tifrozi. 
Be'et Adonai Ta'aritzi. Al Yad Ish Ben Partsi Benishmecha Benagila. Benishmecha. Yeah, Benagila. Very good. Okay, and it's getting late, and I want to make sure we finish this. So we're going to go to the last stanza. Okay, now the end. Now here is where on the fourth line you'll stand. You don't have to stand right now. So it goes, um, Bowie, Bowie, yeah, that's one. Bowie, Bishalom, Ateret Bala, Gam Basimcha, Uvitzahala. Toch emune am segula boi chala boi chala. So we started with the bride. We're ending. Boi come uh, vishalom, come in peace. A teret. A teret is a crown. Bala, the crown of her husband. That's word a lot of uh, modern women don't like because baal is a way uh, they used to say my husband baali in modern Hebrew baali my master. Mm. Baal is master, and it meant also husband. Today, a lot of modern women want to say Ishi. Ish is man, my man. That's my man, Ishi, <laughs> instead of Baali. <laughs> and um, here's something else from Yiddish. Does anyone know the word Balabusta? Sure. <laughs> Balabusta, Shoy, she's a, a, a balabusta. Okay, now that comes directly from Hebrew, Baalat, the mistress of Baalat Habayit, the mistress of the house, Baalat Habayit. Tak, tak, tak. Hello, is the mistress of the house at home, Baalat Habayit. It got mushed together in Yiddish, so it became. Balabusta. That to... comes from Hebrew, that Balabusta, that she's a great homemaker. That's a Hebrew expression, Baalat Habayit, the mistress, the lady of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. In that case, it's okay to be the master of your household, but the master of your husband is your master. I don't think so. Okay. So it says, Boi Vishalom Ateret Bala, you are the crown of your husband. That's like in Friday night, they talk about a woman of valor. Okay, gam besimcha, also with happiness, uvetzachala, and rejoicing, toch emune, amidst, uh, emune is the faith of, am sugula, the treasured nation, um, emuna is faith, boi, that's a feminine, come, boi chala, come bride, boi chala, so when you hear that, that last one says, Bo Eva Shalom, a teret bala, Gamba Simcha, Vetzochala, Tochemune, Amsegula. Then you stand, Bo Echala, Bo Echala, Le Adodi. Okay, so the end is again with the bride. Now the bride has arrived. Okay, we waited at the edge of the field. The sun was going down. We were all dressed up nice. We've washed ourselves. We are ready to greet the bride. And here she is. Okay, l'chadodi, l'chad kala, p'nei shabbat, l'kabbalah. And she's come. And we left, right, and bowed to the bride. So, That's fourth really line. very, very yeah. nice. Beautiful. Carol. Carol. Yes. Do we bow at the fourth line? Yes, you stand, you stand, and you do the, the, usually they do the first three lines, and when you get to, uh, so then, uh, Bowie, stand up, come bride, Bowie, come bride, and you bow left, right, and forward. Now, if you bow right, left, and, and forward, no one's going to know the difference, and no one's going to care, because I read commentary, one big tzaddik, does the left and then the right. Another tzaddik goes right left. I'd like to see them in a boxing ring. <laughs> tzaddik versus tzaddik. <laughs> so let's, okay. Whoever wins, that's, that's, the, that's the rule. <laughs> so <laughs> duke it out, guys.
So it's kind of fun. I was going to do, um, it's getting late. It's a few minutes, but I could just quickly introduce Romamu. There's only two lines. Okay, on the next page is uh, Romamu. I did a little cut and paste. That's why one says 52 and then it's there's 73 at the top. So that's Romimu Adonai Eloheinu Behishtachavu Lachar Kodcho Romimu Adonai Eloheinu Behishtachavu Lachar Kodcho Ki, and then you go Ki, 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 Adonai, wait. I don't know where you are. Ki 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 kadosh Adonai Eloheinu da 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 ki 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 kadosh Adonai Eloheinu Adonai uh, yeah Adonai Eloheinu. So Romimu uh, is to put something on high, um, like Ariba Romimu. Um, so it means um, exalt, high in your spirit, exalt God. Uh, Eloheinu, our God, v'hishtachavu, and uh, bow, um, lahar kodsho, before his holy mountain, Jerusalem, Sinai. Okay, so praise God and bow towards Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is in the east. Ki kadosh, because holy, Adonai, Eloheinu. Words are, are pretty simple here. Again, it's all about praising God. The whole Kabbalat Shabbat, I find, is praising God, and they can find every single synonym they could find they put in these songs. So, Romamu. And um, then I had the next page. I had, okay, Sadika Tamar, you know the melody? There's some lovely melodies, but one is, oh, a okay. lot of melodies. Sadika Tamar, Yifrach, Ka'eras Balvanon, Yizke, Ay, Ay, Ay. Everybody could do that part. Sadi katamar ye frach ka eres balvanon ye skesh to lim bevet bevet adonai behatel eloheinu ya frihu o genuvun beseva. Where's the rest of this? <laughs> Should be here. <laughs> okay, it's only the first two lines I gave you. Sadi Katama, yeah, that's only gave you the first two lines. Okay, well, anyway, if you look in the prayer book, you'll find the rest. So um, that uh, has a couple of trees. Sadi, this is a nice idea. Sadiq, a righteous person, k is like Tamar, a date palm, which is very sweet. Sadiq Katamar Yifrach. A blossoming date palm. When you buy flowers for Shabbat, prachim, perach, that root, pei, reish, chet, it means flourish or flower or blossom. A righteous person is like a date palm and he will flourish. He will bloom. Ka'erez, now we had that before. That's a cedar, remember, from Lebanon. Ka'erez balvanan like a cedar in Lebanon, yisket, which means will be tall, will be flourishing also. So it's a very nice comparison for your tzaddik, you're righteous like a tall cedar, you will flourish, you will be, you're, you're, you'll be sweet like a date palm. And then the name Tamar or Tamara is from the date, date, Eight. Tamar. Mm -hmm. uh, shtulim, shtulim. Uh, planted the Vait Adonai, planted in the house of God. Sh Shatal is plant, Lishto. The Chatzrot in the courts, Eloheinu in the courts of God, Yafrihu will flourish. So uh, you think of God uh, surrounded in a courtyard and his cedars and his date palms, and they're flourishing in, in the sight of uh, God's holy courtyard. Nice, it's really beautiful, poetry, right? Sadi katamar yifrach ka'erez balvanon yizkeh shtulim v'veit adonai v'chatzrot Eloheinu yafrichu. Beautiful, really nice poetry here. Especially since yesterday, the last two days I spent outside gardening. 
I have a wall and I put all my, my out in, indoors, outdoors, and I put uh, in pots, even uh, tomatoes and uh, basil and all kind of stuff. And then I have to do my big garden outside. Hey, a lot of work. Mm -hmm. So we have a um, very quick uh, idea about Kabbalah Shabbat. I suggest you go online, find some uh, song that you like, find a melody that you like and, and stick with it. Get one that you really like and know, or one from your shul and learn it, okay? So see if you can find something that matches up with where you go, and then you can become more proficient, all right? I, I would say that that's um, a very good idea. So after this, and you can see there's, there's the Baruch Hu, Baruch Hu et Adonai Hanvo Rach, Baruch Hu et Adonai Hanvo Rach, Baruch Hu Adonai Hanvo Rach, Le'olam Ba'ed, that's in here too, a little freebie. So then um, there's uh, some more things we have to do that you know, and I have those kind of for the end. We have three more classes we have to do, Adon Olam, En Keloheinu, Matovu, you know those probably. I'll teach you what they mean. Um, and then the last class is June 4th. And we should have a graduation. Dun, da, 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 da. <laughs> so <laughs> who was the person that didn't, Jody, Jody, did you ever get your new certificate? No, I have not. All right, I did tell, I'm gonna talk to Julia today. I will tell her to send it. Well, J-O-D-Y. Correct. Carol. Carol, Carol, how do you say graduation in Hebrew? Um, good, good uh, question. <laughs> Let me see. When you have a, 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 a siyum. 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 You have a siyum hasefer when you finish the book of the Torah. A siyum is a celebration. <laughs> I just remembered it. Carol, is there another class <laughs> after this? Are you going to teach any more classes after this? Um, after the fourth? Yeah. Well, they've given us this um, Zoom time. I'm going to talk to um, Julia today. I don't know. Would anybody be interested? Yes. So they didn't yes. really. All the above. <laughs> we okay. Want... They didn't really set up a, well, um, a curriculum yeah. for the yeah. summer. Um, I would be well, um, honored to do it. I love uh, I love teaching you. You guys are so wonderful. You're smart. I love learning from you. That's Carol. good questions. <laughs> well, it's uh, mutual. The feeling is mutual. You know, I mean, it's we have a really good uh, club here. It's like a little sorority. <laughs> absolutely. Really, it's really absolutely. I've learned a lot from you guys, and and uh, we we help each other with things. Oh, by the way, I'm reading a 420 page book. Uh, it's by Daniel Gordis, who's a fantastic oh, thinker. Great. Gordis, G-O-R-D-I-S. He's written a lot of books and I only read one other book, but he is like a mini think tank unto himself. He is uh, so knowledgeable about the history of Israel, uh, philosophy, uh, literature. Um, anyway, uh, he, he wrote a book, his latest book, Israel. Uh, it's a different approach to history. He incorporates like, when he talks about statehood, he brings in all the different strands who are for, who are against, you know, all the ideas. He brings in uh, poets, uh, Natan, um, is it Silverman? Uh, he brings in literature and he puts that in, in an ongoing history of Israel from days of the Chalutzim. I strongly recommend it. You can't read that when you're sleepy because you really should be, you should be awake um, because it's powerful ideas. And there's a huge, um, there's a glossary at the end of names of people who are important. And then there's a huge uh, appendix. Uh, his, can you, all of his can you email us the title of that book and author? I definitely will. I'm going to send you Thank my you. article about Shovel Alt. I'll send you that. Um, Daniel Gordis, he is, he's amazing. He's a truly a, one of the great uh, finds in Israel. He's, he was American and he moved to Israel. Then he got divorced. He had two or three children. He and his wife divorced, but apparently they have a very strong relationship. And he talks about her and praises her uh, in the end of the book that she uh, is like his right hand. She did uh, proofreading and she helped him uh, ideas. 
So they, uh, even though she's remarried, they have a very strong relationship and that's great for their kids. So, so I wanted to um, yeah, I'll, I'll, what's that? No, I was just gonna share something. I got a text from a neighbor today. Her son is um, finishing eighth grade having religious school finals this coming week. He goes to Des Moines Christian and part of his finals is to interview somebody of a different background, different religion. And he's actually comfortable enough to come talk to me and he wants to learn more about me. He knew I was Jewish and he's like, yeah, I'm good with talking to her because he's yeah, a that's good. boy. So that I'm kind of boy. excited. I just don't want to blow it. Yeah, yeah, no, you won't blow it. You'll just be yourself. Be yourself yeah. and, you know, and, uh, and give your own honest ideas. And that's, that's really the best interview you could give. Oh, Alice can be gone for three weeks. Oh, Where are you going? Sorry, Alice. Uh, I'm going down the Grand Canyon next week, and then my daughter's getting married in Napa, so I'm going to be busy with that. At her oh, weeks. what's the date of the wedding? Uh, June 25th. Sorry, awesome. June 25th. Oh, thank you. And I think I'm what's going to her, be What's her name? Roxanne. Yeah, what's her name? Roxanne. Roxanne. Roxanne and beautiful name. Her name is Rochael. Did you name her after uh, Roxanne in Cyrano de Bergerac? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Roxanne. <laughs> oh, what a great time it's gonna be. Oh, and that's gonna it be it looks fantastic. like I'm gonna be missing uh, June 4th also. I was just looking at my calendar. I have a comp, so I'm okay. gonna be well, whatever, you know, whatever, you know, we'll we'll finish up then. Not as much fun um, as uh, Yeah, Alice is going. Alice, are you going down the canyon on a donkey? No, on one of those river rafts. It's an eight-day trip. Uh, and they, oh, my goodness. They do the rowing for you, and they cook all the food for you, but you have to camp out. You're camping out. And oh, they that's so We're great. actually camping, camping, so not like cabins. No. In a tent? They, like they, real camping? The tent with a little sleeping cot and a and a sleeping bag, and I'm just glad somebody. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So you're you're going down the river. You're not climbing. No, you meet and uh, you meet in Las Vegas. What river is that? The Colorado. What's Colorado. what's the river? Colorado river. You go yeah. Colorado from, River, right? From the right. dam. Wow. Dam. Oh, we used to camp. Yeah, Shabbat Shalom, Faye. We used to camp uh, in a tent uh -huh. and on sleeping bags. Uh huh. And, on the ground. Uh, <laughs> on the ground. On the ground. My, I said to my husband, <laughs> you know, there was a, a tenting oh, store, more sands. I said, if other people do this, why can't we? So mm -hmm. I said, let's go and get a tent and sleeping bags and a propane stove and let's do it. And we went across the country and we did it. Wow. And we went to the Grand Canyon, Inspiration Point. Very and, cool. uh, well, yeah. There's you got me, Alice, with the Grand Canyon and the rafting. You yeah. lost me at the tent. Oh, <laughs> no, oh, it's fine. The tent. You got me on the, they're cooking for me. <laughs> no, well, you got me on that too, but that's fine. No, you lost me on the tent. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Joe, I think I, I, camping I is going to a holiday inn, right? Camping is going so, to a holiday inn. Yeah. Oh, no. no. <laughs> so I told you about that book. Get that book, American, uh, whatever it was. I, I, I told you that book, um, American Dirt. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Oh, I'm re I got it, Carol. I've read it. I've read it. Carol, I powerful. got it, and I'm reading it, and it's fascinating. It's about La Bestia. Thank yeah, you for that's the amazing. recommendation. <laughs> yeah, the other book I, I, I would recommend is um, Maddie Freeman's uh, 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 Spies of No Country, short book. Oh, I read that. About, yeah, the beginning of the Mossad, mm -hmm. Spies of No Country. Yeah, very good. Did you read that, Sue? No, I just wrote it because you said it. I think I did read it, actually. Yeah. Very good. It yeah. Very yeah. good. It's like Some really good I books. I know the title, so I must have read it. I yeah, it's, it's the... the um, is the Daniel book you're reading called Israel, A Concise History of a Nation Reborn? Yes. Oh, okay. I was just curious. I was looking it up online while you. Yeah, yeah. it's. Uh, I think it's in in twenty sixteen. Right. right <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. He's phenomenal. 
Before I forget, next week is um, you know, Haksamea Shavuot, and I will not be having practice on Tuesday. Okay. I want to res- gonna try and reschedule it for Wednesday, even though I'm doing two lectures that day. I'll try and put that in on Wednesday for the practice class. So, <clears throat> and Carol, if you ever want anything scanned, let me know the pages. I'm pretty good at this stuff, so I could do it for you. It's gone. Carol, you're frozen. So you're saying, Helene, you're can't Tuesday, no tr- practice. No practice on Tuesday. I'm looking at doing something on Wednesday, um, like three o'clock in the afternoon. I'll send out an email, a group email, but we're not doing it on Tuesday. Okay. So come Bye, shalom, everyone. Bye, shalom. Robin, I'll see you tonight. Yeah. Okay. Bye, shalom. Alice, have a great trip. Thank you. Alice, have fun. Congratulations on the wedding. Alice. Keep us posted. Okay. Uh, If I can, I know the first in the Grand Canyon, we want to have internet, but the rest of the trip, I'll have internet. Send us emails. (laughs) Yes. Bye. Have fun. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Hag Sameach. Yes, Hag Sameach. Bye bye.